What's up, Internet? Welcome to the Sportfolio Show. My name is Mike Jones at Media Zone on Singer Island, ready to talk some sports with a couple cool people. Would you guys like to introduce yourselves? Hey, everyone. I'm Casey Kiernan. I am a two time world champion skimboarder, a competitive paddleboarder, Woo. all around water person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like it. And uh, I'm James Spencer. You are James Spencer. A little bit more of an exclamation point today. It's versus not a, a question. question mark. Yes. Yeah. And you're like the uh, official Duvin mascot. Uh, talk dirty to me. I would, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to speak flamingo, sir. <laughs> So it's awesome to have you in the studio though, Casey. I know um, I was super into the skimboarding scene uh, back in college up in Jacksonville and uh, skimmed with you a bunch in Volano. And um, I live here on Singer Island and I think one of your secret spots is somewhere around here. So <laughs> Not so secret. <laughs> it's not so secret. <laughs> no. um, but it's great to have you in here. What do you think about Media Zone? Yeah, uh, this is a rad little place and I love what you guys are doing. So um, I'm just happy to be a part of it. Yeah, and thanks for joining it. us. So cool. And um, so, yeah, the Sportfolio Show is our weekly every Friday time to get together and um, drink a beer or a seltzer. <laughs> uh, today we have some hard waters in the studio. So thank you to them for... Uh, you know, giving us electrolytes yes. with our alcohol this morning. <laughs> and honestly, thank you for, uh, you know, the portfolio kind of resume that you've created as well. It's obviously one of our highlights on the website, too. So thank you for that. Yeah. Yep. So back in the day, we uh, we started with Sponsor Go as an idea to help athletes professionalize their approach to marketing. And then over time, we, we kind of analyzed that we want to grow and build on that. And so Sportfolio was born and now we get to come in here and talk about sports and help athletes. And so rad. Pretty sweet. Very cool. So we're going to have to get some of your uh, young skimboarding athletes to uh, get some profiles created. Oh, yeah, definitely. There's a lot of good talent out there. Why don't you talk a little bit um, before we jump into all this stuff about what you do with like the skim lessons and competing or anything that you want to talk about? Oh. Um, so I started competing, gosh, like 10 years ago, um, and I didn't plan on competing, but I got into it because I started progressing really quickly. Um, then a few years later, I went pro, and I won a couple world titles right away, and um, now, like, after I've done so many contests and traveled and and developed like having such a passion for skimboarding um, and the community that is built along with it and all the friends and relationships I've made with it, um, I've wanted to give back. So, you know, I'm kind of at the point where it's like, you know, I've kind of been there, done that. I still want to keep doing that and have that in my life, but I also want to do more with it. So recently um, I started helping to put on a skim contest locally uh, with Ocean Magic Surf Shop in Jupiter. So cool. So that's been really awesome because it brings such joy to kids and their parents to be able to compete and be with their friends and just have something facilitated for them to enjoy. Um, and I love the feedback from that. I'm like, I have to keep doing this. And um, I also just want to help other skimboarders get better and, you know, get to where they want to be when they do compete or just be there and build community and friendships because like it's been like one of the greatest things for me is skimboarding and all the relationships that have come from that and all the life experiences. So um, I started giving free skim lessons, doing like a once a month skimboarding clinic. Anybody can come out. I have boards that were donated by Ride Nature and Zap Skimboards. And, you know, there's always other skimboarders out there to help, uh, you know, coach uh, everyone that comes out and um, sometimes I'll get some sponsors to throw in some pizza and all that kind of good stuff. Um, so that's been fun. I haven't been able to do it really much since the whole COVID thing, but it's something that I am going to continue from here on out. So it's And it's very exciting. rewarding too or fulfilling to to see the the smile on the kids' faces yes. and things like that, right? It's my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> and cool. speaking of Zap skin boards, uh, we're actually from Venice, Florida. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so like I can definitely say that growing up, like my mentors were Steve Boomhauer and Drew Daniello. Yeah. And when I was in middle school, they were like you know, God tier skimboarders yeah. and going to Laguna <laughs> Beach and competing against all those mm -hmm. California guys. And uh, I remember like, yeah, Drew gave me a board and uh, it's so cool. So mm -hmm. I had the stoke from a young age because of someone that wanted to get back. 
And mm-hmm. same feedback for me. He taught me how to skateboard. Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> so big shout out to the uh, the Smets family and all that clan over there. Oh, yeah. Uh, such, such great people. Amazing people. Yeah. yeah. So, and um, yeah, I guess, you know, you're kind of progressed now to paddling really far across <laughs> distances of water. How and is quickly. that working? <laughs> yeah, I try to be quick. Um, it's pretty amazing how things work out. So... Obviously, lots of events and things have been canceled because of COVID. So it was true for that for the skimboarding contest. So since there are no skimboarding contests and the beaches were closed at the beginning of everything, I did have access for my paddleboard to get in the water and me to stay on the water. So um, throughout, you know, those couple months, I would just decided to paddle um, because I wanted to get into paddling to train for the crossing for cystic fibrosis. Um, That got pushed back to next year. So um, I just kept paddling. And then there's this race league that Blue Line Surf Shop hosts uh, right behind Guanabana's uh, pretty much every Tuesday night at six o'clock. So I started doing that to network with people and to just become a stronger paddler. And I was doing well and just getting so much encouragement and help from all the other paddlers in the community. It makes you want to get better and it it makes you better. So there's all these uh, races that have been happening recently. Um, So I've been going and I've been doing well. And um, my first race, I placed fourth. And then my second race, like a couple of weeks later in South Carolina, I placed third, which is huge. And I even got like a hundred dollar check. So Heck I'm yeah. like, oh my gosh, this is making me pro. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah. So I was like, that was really awesome. I was so proud of myself. Um, At least cover the gas money. Yeah. <laughs> or the beer money. <laughs> <Whichever>. <laughs> and then um, this past weekend, I went to Key West and that's a paddle around the whole island. So it's, it's like 11 and half miles and I had no idea what to expect because there's conditions like between the current the waves and the wind from every direction you get everything there and everyone told me they're like all right your only goal should be to survive (laughs) and I was like like are you serious (laughs) so that was like my mentality going into it um but I still obviously wanted to do really well and I had those expectations of myself and I ended up getting third place and it was really awesome yeah because the girl that got first is like literally best in the world and the one that got second um I do paddle with her every week too she's local but she's top you know I don't know what in the world but she's way up there too so I'm just like oh I'm sharing a podium with like the best in the world congratulations (laughs) that's really cool to hear And I've run, you know, like those fun 5Ks. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I know you're going double that with paddling (laughs) against the wind, against the current. Because, like, the way an island works, you're going to be with the wind on one side. But on the way back, like, you're going to be against the wind at some point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so um, we actually got pretty lucky that the conditions were the best this year than they were, like, I think at least in the last several years um but it was still it was still rough and tough and not easy and clearly you survived <laughs> i did <laughs> i'm gonna talk about it did you have a victory drink at a uh, hog's breath or anything like that down there i had about five victory drinks <laughs> like right there on the beach <laughs> they're they giving away well free deserved. beer yeah, so well there's deserved. a lot of free beer involved in paddling <laughs> so Earned that's an incentive yeah. um yeah, and um, that was that was pretty much it Beautiful. for the drinking, you know. Just kind of kept it on the beach, but uh, yeah, it was it was a great time celebrating like everyone's victory too, because our whole team, like I, I went with Flying Fish Board Company, like their whole team and family, cool. and they have such a strong community with them, and everyone did so amazing. So it was really awesome. cool to be part of that, and everyone be proud of each other. Well, let's uh, let's move on to your second favorite sport, golf. Golf, yes. <laughs> And, Talk uh, about DeChambeau. <laughs> seriously. <laughs> like, Mr. Happy Gilmore. I mean, do we start with like the, the taxi cab Puma hat or do we start with him being nine under? Um, Let's start with the hat. <laughs> the hat? I mean, he's swagged out out there, you know? Gotta be. Yeah. He yeah, just be. owns everything. He owns his hat, you know, just like he, being unique with it, which is great. Everyone's got their style, you know, but it's really good to... You know, just own it and and love it. But then he also owns the the fact that he loves to eat and that it's beneficial to him. <laughs> but I, I I can share that because I love to eat, so I'm proud of him for owning sure. that. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> and obviously, a little shout out to Chris Como, his swing coach. 
I mean, uh, we just saw this past week on, on golf.com. He was saying, uh, yeah, my goal is to hit it the furthest that I can, just like Happy Gilmore. <laughs> so it's it's cool to see kind of the sport change, man. It really is. Well, and then when he wins, they like go to Barstool <laughs> yes. or whatever, you know, <laughs> like so not the traditional, like, you know, here's the green jacket. Let's all go to fancy dinners. Yeah. He's putting a little modern, you know, younger person twist on it all. Correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, if you haven't seen him, he also does a lot of the slack lining as well. I haven't seen that. Yeah. So uh, tip of my cap to the slack line. Yeah. And I like I saw like him hit like a shot that if I hit, I would have been doing like a backflip on the golf course. But he was like bummed that he was like, you know, t 20 feet away from the pin or something. But it was like per landed on the green like you would take it any day of the week. He hit a mm -hmm. three, like probably three fifty too. <laughs> oh. And it's just it's just amazing, you know, um, the level of competition and like every stroke matters so much. And, you know, we just go to Top Golf or Drive Shack or wherever and have fun. But it's really cool to see these guys push it that far. Yeah, so seven mil on the uh, Shriners Open this week. Good luck. Yeah. Is that the for first place or is that the total That's price? Total purse, yeah. So okay. he'll probably take at least a mil. Well, he's oh, yeah. if he wins, correct, and or or when I, he wins. I could put my money on him. Ooh, hey, I like it. We yeah. do have side bets in here. Rob will yeah. take those if you need to. Okay. Yeah, hey Rob, can you put that one on the board? <laughs> <laughs> it's um, it's awesome. I know that he's uh, you know, after his last win, he's definitely not hurting for uh, a couple extra bucks in the pocket. But they're so competitive that uh, yeah, he's gonna get after it definitely. So uh, yeah, moving on to the NBA Finals. Big game tonight. Wow. We got game five. Um, supposedly, the Lakers are going to be wearing the Mamba jerseys tonight. Mm -hmm. Wow. They want to well, do it in style, huh? A little shout out for Kobe. Yeah. So uh, I think that's really cool to uh, hopefully they do take it tonight and everybody just moves on. So, uh, Well, we had Logan Morrison in the other week and he was talking about the gentleman sweep and giving him one. Yep. Um, so Jimmy Butler did show up and it's, uh, it's really cool for us in South Florida. Like there's... You feel the energy when a local team or a local athlete or somebody is like making a push. Um, and it's just cool. Like you go to Publix and there's like heat balloons and, yeah, you know, and it's on the radio. It just feels cool to be a part of uh, postseason, whatever yeah. sport it may be. What's your take on the heat? <laughs> go heat. <laughs> Beautiful. I love it. So what else we got, Mike? So they'll do that. Yeah, it'll be exciting to see the tribute and, um, you know. I I just think that it's LeBron stoked that Kevin Durant got hurt, really. Like, you know, he was his kryptonite the past few years and I don't I don't know what he did. It was like an Achilles or an ACL or something at the start of the year and he was out the whole year. Yep. So LeBron's probably giving him a little thanks for uh not being on any yeah. team this year. <laughs> <laughs> um but it's interesting to see actually. He started a podcast, so he's uh, Kevin Durant started like a show, heard it about iHeartRadio or something. Interesting. Nice to see that, you know, the podcasting world is gr ever growing and uh, expanding. And they've been out for a while, but it's now just getting a lot of traction. And uh, moving on to the NFL, I uh, know that last night there's a little bit of controversy with Tom Brady. I don't know if, you, if you've seen or heard. I have not uh, yet heard. Yeah, I mean, it happened at like 10.30 last night, and we're, we're drinking seltzers at 10 in the morning, so there wasn't a lot of time to hear yet. <laughs> so you mean terrible Tammy Brady? Yeah. That's, uh, is this my first or second or third seltzer? I've lost count, <laughs> which is uh, like the big thing. He, he threw a ball that he probably thought was third down, uh, and it was actually fourth down. Um, and he, and he like threw up his fingers, like saying, no, 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 it's fourth down. And like the game was like over mm -hmm. cause, um, there was like 20 seconds left and he didn't complete it on fourth down. So he's going to be the talk of sports radio today. Mental mistakes. You can't yep. make them. It's, uh, it's really, I don't know. That's a game that, that Tampa Bay should have won. Correct. But, um, I know that, uh, our buddy Logan Morrison loves, uh, Nick, and he's got a nice nickname for him. I'm not going to say today. Yeah, Big Dick Nick. Big Dick Nick for the uh, <laughs> Chicago Bears. Um, so, did you see Nick Foles' hat last night? No. Oh, it was all tie dyed. Oh, a really? Tie dyed Bears hat. I liked it. Okay. On the sidelines, looked good. It's uh, you know, whatever they want to wear. It, I, I I love that when people just own who they are. Like Cam Newton, like rocks up like totally head to toe, right? 
and like some people criticize or whatever but it's like be yourself yeah you know exactly like if you want to wear a yellow suit and like a crazy top hat more power to you if you can pull it <laughs> off or a unbuttoned shirt on the podcast yeah yeah <laughs> who would ever do such a thing um so that's exciting to see and i know that there's a couple games that's been pushed this week um so the covid world is still something that's very much a part of everything that's going on and uh we'll we'll wish you know health and wellness to all of the players and coaches and mm -hmm. hopefully they can uh still get the matchups because it's going to get weird at the end of the season if games start getting canceled or forfeited i know um so fingers crossed that uh, everybody can play and stay healthy. Definitely. Yeah. So what about the uh, Miami Dolphins? Is that your team? Are you a Fitzmagic guy? <laughs> um, so I'm I'm a little torn between Dolphins and Bucks. So yeah, yeah. I I love both and I'll always cheer for both for sure. Um, my cousin works for the Bucks, so that's Ooh, kind of awesome. That's cool. Um, and then like just growing up, you know, it's so funny because I think back to like the book fairs in elementary school. And I remember I bought a Bucks poster and I was like eight years old. Like I didn't even play football or anything, but <laughs> <laughs> something in my heart like wanted me to be a Bucks fan. So I've got was, some of that. In was me. it that like pewter orange, whatever shade of orange they used to be? Do you remember? <laughs> no, oh, <laughs> yeah, I, like I, I don't, I don't think it was that though. Oh my gosh. The Vinny Testaverde days. Yeah, it's so yeah. bad. <laughs> Where um where did you grow up? In, it was in Florida, right? Yeah, yeah. here in West Palm. So okay. born and raised and then just kind of all over the county. It's just a hop and a skip over to Tampa from here? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, uh, our boys over in Tampa Bay really let us down last night because I would love to see the uh, like a, a Tom Brady versus the Patriots in the Super Bowl or oh, something yeah. in the end would be so cool. How exciting. <laughs> I still got the Bucks and the Chiefs. You do. <laughs> it was uh, your pick on episode number one, so we'll hold you to it. We'll see. I, I picked the 49ers and then their entire team uh, got injured, so unfortunately mm -hmm. I feel like I'm already out of the running in week four or five Pretty or whatever much. it is. Yeah. <laughs> Bosa turn his ACL, no bueno. Yeah, yeah, you hate to see it. So, But we did have that conversation. Um, that because there was no like spring training or like very limited, that there was probably going to be a lot of soft tissue injuries in like all the sports this year because not the same conditioning. Mm -hmm. I'm sure everyone put on a couple pounds during COVID, <laughs> like at minimum, right? You know, so we'll be excited to, um, you know, see everyone probably start to get into football shape as the season <laughs> goes along because uh, it's like a different thing conditioning versus like actually playing. Mm -hmm. um, I think you would be able to say with like skimboarding and surfing versus going to the gym, like sometimes like you have muscles that are sore that you can't like get in the gym or like yeah. that it's like weird to do. Like after surfing, you know, there's <laughs> things that like maybe you could try to replicate in the gym, but it's like a different sore than a than a gym sore. Definitely. Yeah. And then you just push so much harder when you are either working for like towards like a contest event or a game um, and then like in that game or whatever event it is like you go hard so things are going to be hurting differently and trained differently for sure and i also think it's a difference of playing versus training mm -hmm. like when you go skimboarding or playing like a little kid versus training in the gym and um i think that's just like a common misconception for a lot of people is like the more we can play we will push ourselves more yeah and, and training is a little bit more of a job versus having fun mm -hmm. so Big difference. And skimboarding in Florida is a really fun thing to do um, if you don't hit the board against your shin. <laughs> but you do that. Or, yes. or fall. <laughs> That's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Um, I like, you know, I, I was like, I'm going to surf now because I, I'm tired of falling on the sand. <laughs> because once you get like after your like early 20s or something, like skimboarding starts hurting a lot yeah. more. That's everyone's story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. And you're in uh, like the health and fitness world now? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, Talk a little bit about that. Okay. Yeah. So I'm a dietitian. Um, so I've been doing like clinical nutrition, like working with patients in hospitals and outpatient and just different like specific diseases, and whatnot. Um, so yeah, I've been doing that. I love it. I, and um, I did some personal training last year. So I'm still a certified personal trainer. Um, but that's just like where my like career passion is within like nutrition and just helping people get healthy, especially the people that like want to get healthy or realize, you know, they need better for themselves. Because 
for me, I love everything I do with all my sports and activities and I want other people to realize like there's so much more life than what you've been living when you don't have like the health and wellness and fitness all that and it's like you know you feel so much better and then you're just like mentally better and you just give more of yourself to the world and you can receive more back so it's just like all around happiness (laughs) I love it I love it is that um like through like a a business or a practice or do you do that like through your own self or how does that work um i don't have like my own business or anything right now like i'll take if if i know someone who knows someone that needs like some counseling or some training i'll do that on the side but right now i've just been like working under other businesses and whatnot um so because i'm still i'm still learning you know so i just want to be as fully like knowledge on like everything that like i can be so You'll always be learning too. Yeah. That's cool. Definitely. That's really cool. And there's a lot of um, athletes in South Florida because there's a professional mm-hmm. team for almost every single league between like Miami and, and Tampa or whatever. So I think um, we really have it all covered here. Everything from golf to football. Hockey. The equestrians coming to town this mm-hmm. uh, this winter, which will be interesting because uh, I think we were saying that the Olympics, obviously they got pushed to 2021. So there's some qualifying and some things that they got to do out in Wellington this uh, this fall. A little more competitive. And uh, it's just fun, like the Saturday Night Lights. I don't know. Have you ever been to like the WEF or anything like that? No, not yet. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. yeah it's a different experience. You got to check it out. Yeah, no, it's it's on my list for sure because I know like because I'm into like experiencing different things and just being more like well versed on things. And that's something that's up there. And it's free. Oh, that's, like, that's that's great. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I think is really cool too. Is they try yeah. and get more people into the sport as well. Very cool. Just got to pay for parking, right? Yeah, it's a quick fee. Uber. <laughs> oh well, hey, Ooh, there you go. And that's then then drink more seltzers. One hundred percent. You're like the spirit animal of this podcast right now. <laughs> <laughs> Just drinking more seltzers. Um. Well, I think uh, the last thing that we can top on top off here with is the uh, the surfing world. Um, we do have to touch on baseball too. Do you want to? A little bit. Okay. I yeah, I mean, do. I'm sad about the Marlins. Yeah, I was gonna say we got to guys. We please gotta, take yeah. it over. <laughs> Definitely got to touch. I'll go on. get the tissues for you. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> Did you watch the game last night? Um, I didn't watch it, but I I watched the score f- from my phone. <laughs> so big Marlins fan, first time making the playoffs in quite some time. Yeah. Um, it was very exciting when they did make the playoffs, and I had such high hopes. You know, of course we do because it's it's their first time back in the playoffs in a long time. Um, But yeah, I was pretty sad last night. (laughs) That's all right. I think uh, um, it's cool to see, um, just as our our good friend Sean had mentioned, there's going to be a lot of good playoff games here in the future. So um, we got probably about another month left and uh, we'll see what happens for the World Series. Yeah. Yeah, I've uh, I've loved baseball my whole life because growing up, it was on every day. My grandma was a diehard Marlins fan. My dad, my brother grew up playing. So it was just like always on, always around. And like my brother has all this like memorabilia and everything. So I'm just like all about baseball. It's like my it's my favorite sport to watch and to be part of. That's really cool. Was it? Was it Griffey? Was he on the Marlins like way back in the day, or am I thinking of somebody else? No, Who that was, was the stud? Mariners. Okay. Yeah. Who was uh, the, who Logan was Morrison actually was their stud. Oh, was he? <laughs> was he really? Yeah, he was. He oh, played no for way. the Marlins, yeah. Good for him. Yeah, <laughs> the Marlins and the Rays. Yeah, he's an all right guy. Um, And then obviously, you know, with the Yankees, big win yesterday. Pinstripes, baby. Got to. <laughs> Somebody's got to wear them. Got to. And I know Rob would appreciate this stat. Rob? Hey, hey Rob, you ready for this one? 15 postseason games with a home run major league record whatever or in a row or yep. what yep in a row oh. No, oh, wow. not, not in a row but consistently from last year to now the uh, okay. or the last whatever how many years that they've made the postseason they've hit a home hmm. run in 15 games well the fans are getting uh the bang for their buck on yeah. that one <laughs> especially from home yeah because it's tough like you know if you go to a baseball game and the pitching is just like on that's a little boring. Like the seventh inning stretch, you need to like really get up and stretch. So yeah, a little <laughs> shout out to the Yanks winning over the Rays yesterday. I know Rob appreciates that one. Yeah. What do you think, Rob? Good? 
it's a it's a running joke. I know, you, like uh, our friend Rob is our uh, intern for the studio, and he's, he's our, our stats, stats guy too. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, he couldn't make it here this morning, so we're 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 looking at him and talking and a shit. little bit of jest. <laughs> and speaking of a, a little bit of jest, we have our friend Sean Wilson who uh, filmed a segment that I'm going to splice in right now. So let's tune in to Sean Wilson. Sean Wilson here. Let's talk baseball. For the first time in history, the World Series will be held on neutral turf in Arlington, Texas, at the brand new home for the Texas Rangers, Globe Life Field. Now, on a normal day, Globe Life Field will hold 40,300 fans. But thanks to COVID, it will only see 11,500. Now, these tickets are all being sold in pods of four, and each pod, of course, is appropriately distanced from another. And fans won't be able to get within 20 feet of any players. Bullpen, dugout, you name it, you call it, not happening. So, tickets are going for as low as $75 a pop, probably why I sold out on MLB.com in 90 minutes. So, resale values are $350 to $400 for get-in prices. And thanks to Ticket IQ, we know that's less than half of what we normally see for a World Series ticket. And in the last decade, the highest price ticket on average for a World Series game was $4,500. That was 2016 for my Cubbies. Hey, thanks, Sean. We really appreciate the uh, segment on baseball. And we're really looking forward to see who wins the World Series, even though it's not your Cubs. And the hat matches the shirt, so thank you for that. Hey, Sean Wilson, we appreciate that segment, buddy. Let's close it out with a little bit of surfing, and then uh, I think we'll wrap up with uh, with another seltzer out there in the studio. <laughs> That's it. So uh, interesting for the surfing world, um, forever and ever and ever, the season always ended in Hawaii. And like it's always in December and it's always like right before Christmas. Mm -hmm. And usually the title is on the line. Usually like unless Kelly Slater is has locked it up in Portugal or something two months prior. Usually like going into Hawaii, there's like two or three guys that have a chance to win. And uh, it makes for some really dramatic like on the beach experiences because it's pretty close. Mm -hmm. Like the spectator. I've never been but like. It's like less than a football field away um, from the sand. And it's sort of like that with skimboarding, too. Like, you're so close to the action. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so there's like a vibe on the beach, right? Right, yeah. It's it's cool how involved it is. And I couldn't imagine, like, being there, like, on the North Shore during that event, especially, like, if there's a few people fighting for that title and just getting to watch it all go down. And, and at that level, too. And there's a lot of money and bragging rights on the line. Oh my gosh, yeah. Like uh, they, the you know, the World Surf League has really stepped it up after they like transitioned from the ASP days. Um, you know, they get sponsored by Samsung and and uh, like I know Corona sponsored the tour one year, and that was like a big thing about like can surfing have a beer sponsor? And I'm like, they absolutely can have a beer sponsor. Yeah. And I believe the WSL owner is uh, a Palm Beach local. Well, can you ask him to go ahead and get that Kelly Slater wave pool back out in Jupiter Farms for us? Please. It's going to head up north. And can you like put a skim wave in there too? <laughs> yeah. Or even just do like a uh, Brad Domkey and just like paddle in with the skim board on your like soft yeah. top and then just <laughs> jump off onto the skim board. Could do um, that, I guess. <laughs> it's cool to see Brad. I, I'm sure you've skimmed with Brad a hundred times, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, I know he's like skimmed with J-O-B out in Hawaii. Yeah. Uh, with the the step offs onto the skim boards. Mm -hmm. um, different thing because no fins, right? Yeah. it's It takes a while to get used to it, like surfing on your skim board. But I can't imagine it either, like that type of a wave. Um, yeah. But with Dom Key's board, his board is weighted too. So that oh, really? makes a huge difference. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. He got clip of the year a couple years ago. Yeah, for like the massive one in like Puerto yeah. Escondido or yeah. wherever he was yeah. in Mexico. Yeah, that deserves a lot of props. Yeah, <laughs> I know he's um yeah he, he's a great dude. We've I grew up skimboarding with him. I've been to Cabo a bunch of times mm -hmm. and been in Squid Row with uh, with him <laughs> having beers. Yeah, he's a classic dude. Um, but yeah, with the the surfing league, it'll be interesting to see because now they're starting in Hawaii. So new dynamic this December. World Surf League kicks back off. 
mm-hmm. before Christmas. So yeah, same time. It's a good like Christmas present. I like that. <laughs> yeah. So, but I think that's pretty much it for this episode of the Sportfolio Show. Anything else you guys want to close out with? Cheers. Yeah. Just thanks cheers. for coming on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks cheers. for having me. To Woo. me.